Uh, Houston is a, a very, very talented team. Uh, you know, it's expecting a big crowd Thursday night. Uh, how much are you looking forward to seeing how your guys respond against a good team and a tough place to play? Well, I think the the, the good to uh, playing a really good team at home and a probably a sellout crowd is uh, you know your guys. The kids would rather play those type of games. You know, as a coach, you you really fret over the empty gyms. Uh, in a team that has talent but doesn't have a great record. You know, I think uh, our guys are well aware how talented Houston is. And, uh, you know, they, they, they understand that they beat Connecticut so the other day, which probably helps me as far as uh, the mental preparation for this game. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, all, uh, uh, it's all relative. You know, how much meaning it has, I don't know. It, it, you know, at the end of the day, the game's played between the lines. And you, you alluded to Houston's talent. That's what concerns me the most. Uh, they get guys can shoot the ball. But I think most importantly, uh, they got a couple of veteran guys, in particular uh, Pollard and, and Dotson and Barnes, those three guys. If they give Houston uh, some fortitude and some toughness uh, that have turned their program around. You know, Pollard and Barnes being seniors, uh, you know, so obviously you're dealing with their, their senior night. And they get, this is their last, they don't play this weekend, so this is it for them. But uh, those, uh, their players concern me probably more than, the, than anything else. You know, I, always, I always said that back when we were in the Big East, and I was 34 coaching against Jim Calhoun. You know, I had great respect for him, but I was, we weren't playing one-on-one. -on -one. They are the best. Offensive, at least have the best offensive numbers. You have the best defensive numbers. With them, is it just shooters? Or it no, they 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 get they're, they're very they run a spread offense. Yeah. They don't have a low post game. Uh, with them, it's they have multiple answers. So at point guard, Ronnie Johnson could have a big game, or Galen Robinson could have a big game. You know, on the wings, you got Rob Gray, who is a leading scorer in the conference, but then doesn't even start anymore. Uh, you know, you got Dotson and Barnes. You, you know, you got Dan Red Knowles, who can go for double figures. Some games he doesn't score. Uh, you know, Pollard is a, 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 and has been very consistent for them. I think he's the key. When, they str when he struggles, they struggle. And you really look at, analyze Houston. Uh, he, he's, he's been the constant for them for their success. Uh, and they they got a host of guys that can play at the center, but they really don't have a low post game. But they so and they have guys that I've even mentioned that have had double figure games for them that don't even get in some games. Okay, Weary and Van Beck. Uh, so I mean they're truly a team that plays a lot of people, and they you know I think Coach Sampson some games he decides to play big, some guy some games he decides to play small. Uh, depending on, I think, who he's playing against. You know, I, probably his time in the pros got him focused on uh, matchups. So how do you think he'll play against you? Uh, you know, it's in, I think right now the MO against us is the score in transition, you know, because of our half-court defense and, and its effectiveness. Uh, you know, the, the two things that teams try to really do against us, one would be scoring transition, uh, and two would be try to offense, you got offensive rebound, because our first shot defense is, is as good as anybody in the country. So, it's, but when we're five on five, and we get back on defense. So, uh, just trying to make sure our guys are fresh legged uh, for Thursday night. That's, that's, you know, that's a concern, obviously, with Shaq and Farad day to day. Are they a different team now than they were the last time you played them in terms of what they do or how they use their personnel? Well, I, they're not different, I think, uh, uh, from the, their style of play. Here's where Houston's different. I think when they got a couple of wins, in particular the home win against SMU, I think that their kids realized they were pretty good. You know, then it gave them a confidence. You know, so they, whatever they've won five out of the last six, they're only lost being in the last second to Temple, um, who, who's uh, in first place because, quite frankly, they've just they've been on the right side of a, a lot of two-point wins. Uh, but I think that SMU win at home gave them gave them confidence, uh, and and I just see a change in their attitude. That makes them more dangerous. Yeah, I think they got a belief in themselves now. You know, and they're, you know, and uh, I was traveling last night trying to read stuff in the recruiting, and, and uh, I read where Damian Dotson uh, said that uh, 
you know, they're, they're on a mission. To, they believe they're going to make the tournament, whether, whether they beat us and go on. They, they believe they're trying to make the NCAA tournament. So, so, you know, something changed, I think, of, you know, where they were still in rebuilding mode to, hey, we can, we, we can do it this year. I think that the home win against SMU probably was a big confidence builder for them. They, they seem to play with a lot more confidence since that game. But you're on the same mission. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you know, no you doubt. Know you can't talk about it. Oh, I, I mean, you, you, every game is important. Yeah. You know, for us, it's continued improvement. I think you got to focus on that. Uh, you can't focus on anything else. you got to focus on basketball, you know, uh, getting everybody to my job is to is to help these guys play to their best of their ability so you feel like you're and you don't want to take steps back you know jacobs made great progress troy had a big game the other day you know get, getting guys to play consistently and getting guys to play up to their ability uh you know with gary clark just trying i i, I honestly just think need to get gas he needs to get, go to the gas station and he's thinking his tank was on empty i don't think you know i was kidding around it was about homecoming i just i don't think it was that i just these you know sometimes these kids people don't realize what they go through and the the adrenaline drain you know i say to myself sometimes if i feel tired how do they feel <laughs> you know and a kid like gary clark we asked to do so much for our team uh you know, the, so just trying to make sure that uh, our gas tanks are back on full for Thursday night because we're going to need it all to win this game. You've talked a lot about the fact that, you know, the magnitude of games, what it means for the NCAA tournament, the fact that you just want your guys to improve and not focus on that. But in modern society with people telling them what's important, what's on social media, do you have to talk to the guys about not focusing on meetings of games and what the game might Well, the be. beauty of it is there was a time I remember being with Coach Huggins in the, uh, we're in the same locker room, unfortunately, uh, but sitting in that same locker room and saying where he had to explain to our guys what the committees looked at and, you know, what RPI or BPI or SAG, you know, what all that stuff. I remember him trying to explain that to the guys, you know, now, the beauty of, of you guys, I don't have to do that. So we just coach basketball because everybody says everybody else takes all the time to do that. So I don't have, all I got to do is talk to them about basketball and make sure that we stay focused on basketball. But it would be very naive of me to think, I mean, they know. So it's beautiful. I don't even have to talk about it. You know, because of they all have phones and, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not uh, a genius, but I know that they look at that stuff. So, I mean, they're well aware that it's, you know, we, we're, we're on the cusp of doing what we need to do to get into the tournament. So it's great. I don't have to address it. But uh, you should have been in those meetings when he was trying to explain some of that stuff back in the day. <laughs> I'm sure Gresh and Bill can appreciate, appreciate that the discussion of the breakdown of the RPI in 1997 in that locker room. How close are Shaq and Fry they've been practicing? Would you expect to be short? I have not practiced. Uh, I'm just day, day to day. Both guys. Uh, both guys are, uh, I, I'm going to treat differently because they have different injuries, but uh, it'll be up to them, you, you know, and, and Shaq is somebody because of his groin, got to be really careful with, you know, with Fraud, it's just a matter of him getting comfortable again. But, you know, Fraud's not going to re-injure himself. I mean, the groin is a delicate thing. Uh, you know, we believe we're going to be playing in March, so it's it's important for me to have Shaq for tournament time. Really, so he would really, some people really have to convince me uh, that he's not going to re-injure himself for me to play him in a regular season game. I mean, it, I mean that that's just the facts because I believe we're going to be playing in, at tournament time. So, um, you know, that that to me that's where we need him the most. Because the groin is a—it's it's, it's an injury you can, uh, you, you can aggravate uh, just by practicing. So, uh, you know, he's he's got the yellow jersey on, puts him on the bike in the French Alps. So, uh, Farad's different. He's not going to—you know—his he, he doesn't have a re-injury situation. You know, he sprained his knee, uh, made him uncomfortable, made him sore, and it's just a matter when he feels like he's ready to go. If they don't play, how to phrase this right? Is it more important to have those guys for this game than maybe the last game because of the way Houston plays? More important for you to have more depth? Tough to say. Yeah. You know, it depends. Depends. You know, each game takes on a life of its own. Depends on officiating too. 
you know, foul trouble didn't come into play at East Carolina. You know, so you just never know. You know, hopefully you're not interviewing me after the game, but we were in foul trouble, and you're saying, boy, you wish you would have had those guys. How frustrated is Shaq right now? He's oh, yeah, it's him. tough. Very tough for Shaq. I, I uh, feel for him. Pray for him every night. You know, it's just when you're with a kid five years and, uh, you know, he was playing so, so well when he went down at Connecticut, and since then it's just been, it's just been a spiral of things that have happened to him. So, uh, but he, you know, I keep trying to tell him he's been through tougher things in life. You know, he's got to just, he's got to stay positive. But it, it's hard, you know, I, you just feel for him.